Hello there and welcome to launch on this Thursday, November 5th, 2020. I'm dressed up today. You know what? I just felt like it. I don't dress up near as much as I used to. Things have changed so much. I have more of a broadcast ministry and writing ministry than I do an in-person ministry, but I'm thankful for our in-person worship, our in-person Bible study, and especially our online presence. Very happy to see many joining us. We know that this time shall pass. Until then, let's launch into life together with a question. First of all, what powerful kingdom conquered Judah and related Daniel, sorry, relocated Daniel to another place in their empire? I'll read that again. Try to get it right this time. What powerful kingdom conquered Judah and relocated Daniel to another place in their empire? Now, I think I forgot to share something funny yesterday, or maybe I forgot that I already did this. Maybe I'm repeating myself. I am getting older. I'll turn 55 this month. I can't wait to get my senior coffee at McDonald's. In case I have shared this before, pardon me for that. The manager of a glass and window company advertised in the paper for experienced glaziers. Glazers. Since a good glass man is hard to find, he was pleased when a man who called about the job said he had 12 years of experience. Where have you worked as a glazier? The manager asked. The man replied, Krispy Kreme. Glazed, glazier, glazed donuts. <laughs> now, I love donuts. Uh, I wish I could have one every day. If I did that, I, I wouldn't be able to, to fit into this tie and shirt. Now let's jump in to our passage. We launch into the Word of God, Mark 1, 21 through 28. Jesus and those who were with him went to Capernaum. When the Sabbath day came, he went into the synagogue. There he began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching. That's because he taught them like one who had authority. He did not talk like the teachers of the law. Just then a man in their synagogue cried out, he was controlled by an evil spirit. He said, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus firmly. Come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man wildly. Then it came out of him with a scream. All the people were amazed. So they asked each other, What is this? a new teaching, and with so much authority. He even gives orders to evil spirits, and they obey him. News about Jesus spread quickly all over Galilee. Jesus just called the first few disciples. He did this around the Sea of Galilee near Capernaum. He went to Capernaum and maybe stayed with Peter and his family. But apparently, he found his own home there, because when he had returned from a trip out and about, the people commented Jesus had come home. This was his new hometown. It was his base of operations for his ministry in Galilee and, I think, beyond. As was his custom, he went to church, and, of course, that meant going to church on the Sabbath or Saturday. Something out of the ordinary happened in church. It wasn't just all quiet. Somebody cried out, a man that was present. Mark tells us he was controlled by an evil spirit, literally an unclean or impure thing. It comes from the Greek word akatharto, and it stands for something that is impure because it's mixed with something that's not pure. When coupled with the word for spirit, it stands for demons or bad angels. It's used 26 times in the Gospels, Acts, and Revelation. So what are we to make of this? Mark makes it a point to begin this section with emphasizing Jesus' authority, his authority as a teacher. It was of such power that the people identified it as something new. 
Mark repeats the interrogative, and then he mentions that the people said Jesus had even more authority beyond teaching. He had an authority in the spiritual world. Even the evil spirits, the impure, unclean spirits, obeyed him. Interestingly, the man who was under control by this spiritual power addresses Jesus, asking Jesus what he wants with them. Notice the plural, with them. Now, maybe he's asking on behalf of the whole church. Uh, maybe he's asking on behalf of others that are controlled by spiritual powers. Uh, maybe he's talking for all the impure. Maybe there's more than one entity involved in controlling him. And then the, the, the man removes all doubt about his knowledge of Jesus and identifies Jesus as the Holy One of God, the Christ. Now, how could he have known that? Nobody else was making that statement. And here was someone influenced from beyond who had some special knowledge. This is an amazing exchange. One that has to do with spiritual powers beyond the normal range of vision. Jesus commands the controlling force to shut up and to come out. And it does so with an audible scream. No wonder news spread so fast about Jesus. Authority to teach, authority over the evil spirits, and the evidence of conversation and scream, the evidence of power and control, the evidence of Christ winning the day. Question, why did Jesus silent the spirit? I think it's for this reason. It was not yet time for God to disclose the full identity of Christ. It was coming. It was close. So inter interestingly here, the evil spirit knows Jesus as Son of God. What does that have to say about the many people who miss it and particularly the many religious leaders who rejected him. We're going to see that very quick in Mark. Mark gets right to that rejection in Capernaum coming up in the next few verses. There's a quote I like right here. It goes this way. Many may spurn our appeals, reject our message, oppose our arguments, despise our persons, but they are helpless against our prayers. We're going to see next that Jesus goes off to pray. His ministry, the whole foundation of it was prayer. Let's wind this up with a great statement from a famous preacher, Charles Spurgeon. I would recommend you either believe God up to the hilt or else not to believe at all. Believe this book of God, every letter of it, or else reject it. There is no logical standing place between the two. Be satisfied with nothing less than a faith that swims in the deeps of divine revelation. A faith that paddles about the edge of the water is poor faith at best. It is little better than a dry land faith and is not good for much. Believe. That's what Mark bids us to do. Just believe. Truly and sincerely and deeply and watch what happens. Let's pray. God, we believe and at the same time help our unbelief. We're a mixture of belief and doubt, bravery and fear, strength and weakness. We are so human. Grant us the ability to transcend our everyday humanness and to become more like Brother Jesus. Strengthen our faith and our prayer time and our time in the Word. Help us to crave them and to desire them and to be using them as a means of drawing closer. Not as a means of being accepted, but as a means of drawing closer. So that we can deal with the spiritual powers that be on both sides of the equation. Give us victory over that which is unclean and impure and help us to follow your divine revelation daily through the Spirit of God. We ask for continued peace and power and protection. Lord, grant us that wisdom from beyond to navigate these challenging days. And we pray in Christ's name. Amen. 
What powerful kingdom conquered Judah and relocated Daniel to another place in their empire? The Babylonians. Yes, indeed they did. And we'll go into Daniel at greater length at some time. The good news is God has given us time to explore different facets of the Bible. We're going to spend some extra time in Mark. Can't wait to go into the next passage with you. I wish you well today. Take care. God bless. Hope to see you soon.